Good afternoon ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve and you're watching Snotcraft with Steve in his new gear room. Hope you're all well. That is right ladies and gents, the cold weather has come round once again and we have had the young nieces and nephews round last weekend and they were all coughing and spluttering and it was inevitable that I would catch that uh, virus at some point. So I'm not well enough to get out at the minute. Um, I do apologise for any snots and snivels you might hear throughout the video. Um, but what a perfect time to show you around my newly uh, built and organised gear room. Now ladies and gents, in all of my years bus crafting, this is actually the first time I've seen all of my gear um, in one place and at this level of organisation. So these videos can run quite long, so I'm going to try and keep this nice and short. Uh, we're going to go from the back of the camera and work our way around this side of the room. There's also a couple of um, new pieces I picked up from the last couple of months, say three or four months. So we're going to take them down at the end of the video, put them on the table and have a closer look at them. So let's crack on with the video. So on this wall is where I keep all my bushcraft cutting tools, knives, saws, axes and hatchets. So in the top we have uh, all my knife selection, um, if you're new to the channel I have picked up quite a few uh, new ones which we'll take to the bench at the end of the video. So here we have my beloved uh, Jack Law, picked that up very recently at the Bushcraft show from a, uh, an awesome friend. Here we have my Silky Gone Boy Bushcraft Black, we have one from Feared Woods, this is the Leshy, awesome knife again. We have the Falcon Even S1 XB. Uh, my newest acquisition is the Adventure Swan. I believe this is the Explorer, we'll have a closer look at that. Um, and a couple from a custom knife maker down the road, who makes awesome wares um, from GT Knives. Keep them up there as well. Um, we have the Boreal 21, just across there, and here are my um, archets and axes. So we have the Grand Falls Brooks, Small Forest Axe, the Hand Archet, again from... Um, Grand Falls Brooks, we have the Gone Boy Silky Outback, tremendous saw, absolutely fantastic. And we have the Fiskars Norden N10, just here. Um, that has been reviewed on the channel, you can go and check back through the um, gear review playlist and you can find that. As well as the saw <coughs> and a couple of the knives up here. Another one from GT Knives, the tiniest bushcraft necker, knife necker in the world, necker knife in the world. Um, but that is, um, also, we also have the R2 Scout from Folk Demon again. So yeah, all cutting tools will be kept on this wall. I do have a couple of ornamental axes um, that I do want to like just put around here, again for ornamental use. Um, so that is that wall. On the bottom of the same wall, we have my beloved air rifle. If you're into air rifles, you may know already what this is. For those that don't, this is the Air Arms S410 CDR takedown rifle. This one is 0.22 flavour. I do prefer 177, but this is the one that came along at the time and I snatched this up. This is definitely one of my Grail air rifles. Underneath that is the Alpacool fridge freezer that Tony very generously donated with the caravan. Uh, we did leave the caravan with an electric cooler, um, but the uh, fridge did come with us. That is that. Oh, on that side we have the manual pump for the um, air rifle. <coughs> This is a Hills Mark V, I do believe, with the, um, I've not even used that, it's gone green already, that should be orange. Um, yeah, with the filter in there, filter substrate, fantastic pump, and it does get your sweat on, but it fills the air rifle adequately um, in short time as well, so that covers this wall. We have our physical media. Because we all know one day the digital media when the lights go out will be non-existent so it's important to have physical media um, in your kit room. I've learnt a lot of what I know <coughs> early days admittedly from TV like Ray Mays, people like that. But uh, majority of it has come from books, just reading. So we have a good selection of Ray Mays books here, um, wild plants, trees, food, all that good stuff. Um, so a good library there. Coming to this side, we have uh, ammunition for the air rifle. A couple of good, um, one, that's the 177. So my preferred for hunting is Polymag. Uh, we have a Cinevac Capel, some Diablo Field, and Jumbo Exact. All really good pellets. Um, Polymag's been uh, the best for hunting, I would say, from previous experience on the Diablo Field. Pellets, I don't know if you know, have actually ramped up in price now, so um, they are quite expensive. 
So on this shelf is like a small charging area. Uh, we have the Bluetti EB55 and the All Powers um, S300, which has again been repaired. So we've got many sockets, USBs, just easy for charging torches and small devices around this area. So all the torches are kept around here as well. So we have the Sulfur 30 That's probably my most powerful torch at 12,500 lumen. We have the Perrin 2 head torch from Olight. Cracking little head torch that. Um, we have, I've not used this one for a while. This is the Olight Warrior Pro. These have all been recently charged. And we have the Seeker 4 Pro from Olight. This is an absolutely tremendous uh, little torch. Probably one of my favourites. And then an old Phoenix. Uh, 350 lumen lantern. I use this quite often, especially for winter camping. At the back we also have power packs um, and plugs for all of this um, and the solar panels for the power stations are kept on the other side of the room which we'll have a look at soon. So on these two shelves here on the top we have an um, electric hookup for outdoor camping. We have the gas cooker and the gas cylinder from the camping adventure. On the bottom shelf here we have lots of highly flammable and uh, questionable things to be kept in a room on its own but anything that can be ignited like matches and lighters are kept on the other side of the room so um, we may have to get a steel box for this we'll see how we get on we'll only get one chance like so <laughs> so in there we have lots of um, tins of gas which I got very very cheaply we have tinders uh, paraffin um, methylated spirits boil and seed oil candles um, and more gas here we have lots of the ready-made tinders that the wife makes um, we have a bit of kindle in there as well so explosive so ladies and gents on the first kit shelf is what I call my military surplus shelf um, or the ex-army kit I don't have a lot of it I'm not a massive collector of military uh, surplus gear but I have acquired a few bits over the years and some of this, um, I'd say the majority of this, comes off um, channel subscribers, so thank you very much for that. New piece up here, very, very recently acquired. Uh, I've not managed to identify it, but we will get this on the table. Um, and hopefully that you guys with more information on the... Bloody hell, how big is my hand up there? Ooh. <laughs> um, you guys that might have a bit more information um, will be able to identify this t uh, for me. Also, we have a couple of British Army um, Arctic bags, different colours here, so they could be from different years. But um, these are great bags, very bulky and heavy, but in the winter they do serve the purpose. Um, we have my Ben Orford wool blanket up there also, which isn't surplus, but it goes with the sleeping bags. Next shelf down we have um, military knee pads. I did use these um, quite a bit before I got the foam inserts for the Fjallraven. Vida Pro um, trousers, but they're there in case anyone else needs them. We have the Dutch Army Tent. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic tent. I've had this in all sorts of um, torrential um, adverse weather, and it still holds up to this day. This isn't your typical one. I know these are quite popular um, in the surplus camping and uh, survival camping sort of sectors of YouTube, but this one is actually one of the modified ones with the flaps over the zips so it is fully watertight and you're guaranteed that you will wake up dry in this even in the most torrential rain another newly acquired piece from my father um, he brought this to me a few weeks ago i believe this is the british army mini shetty um, so that's nice to add to this and i do plan on hopefully if i'm feeling well enough um, in the two weeks i've got off now i'm currently on my third day I do want to get out and do a full uh, surplus camp uh, using some of the gear I've picked up and this will be coming with me as the only cutting tool keeping with the theme so that just stays there <clears throat> this has actually got um, someone's name and number on it as well and this is actually classed as a Golok um, Golok I believe are more rounded on the front but I've seen this advertised as a mini Shetty um, <clears throat> so going below that, this is not, this should be the bag for one of these, it's not, this has got the DD 5x5 tarp in it, but it's in the uh, military sack, so that will stay there. So over on this side we have a couple of um, ex-military bottles, I believe these are Swedish, I'm not 100% sure. This is one I picked up from a military surplus store and a car boot in Wales. This is aluminium, don't like it, I thought it was stainless. And this is my favourite, this is a German canteen. 
um, and I believe these bottles are switched so this one lives in this one here. We also have a prototype British Army um, alcohol cooking stove. This is a fantastic bit of kit and this was given to me at the Bushcraft show not last year, year before by Tom, my good friend Tom and with that you get a Descati um, alcohol stove. Just pour your mess in there, that goes in and it actually boils your water very very quickly and again that is extremely light, it's like a tinfoil design uh, I'm hoping this is on camera because I can't see the screen but them two combined weigh absolutely nothing we have a German uh, cutlery set with a tin opener, knife, fork and spoon great bit of kit, quite heavy but I will be using that in the uh, military surplus camp this one I am quite excited about um, this has very recently been acquired from the same gents who give me the unidentified sleeping bag at the top so we'll have a look at that on the table as well this is a Dutch army hooped bivvy um, this is the first one in my kit, I've never used one before I do use the British army bivvy bags but this one um, I laid it out in here on the floor the other day with a hoop around the top it's absolutely massive it has the same pattern as a Dutch army tent and I think I'm going to enjoy using this I thought claustrophobia might kick in when using it but um, looking at the size of it the other day absolutely fantastic and when I went online to have a look at the uh, specs of this and you know where it came from um, I'm not usually interested in the price but this is going for £104 and this gent Lee uh, thank you very much Lee he just gave me this and it is absolutely banging condition and again I can't wait to use that this is a bag for the um, British Army bivvy there but I use I put all my cordage in this now self confessed I do have a big problem with keeping um, bags with the original bit of kit they're coming reason being for prime example the DD hammocks um, tarps the larger size like the 4x4 and the 5x5 they come nice and folded in the uh, original bag when you first get them but when I've taken them out and used them for the first time I do prefer the stuff and crush method um, just so you're not repeatedly folding that tarp over on the same lines and when you come to put that back in its bag, using the stuff and crush method, it is um, done with great difficulty if possible at all. And I've ripped a few bags trying to get them back in. Um, so again, the 5x5 is in the large Arctic bag. Um, the 4x4 is in another bag, um, similar to this. And in the DD Hammocks uh, 4x4 bag there, we'll find the One Tigress tarp, because that's easier to fit in. So um, a lot of what you see probably hasn't got the original piece in. <laughs> but there you go. Off shelf down we have a couple of ex-military British Army Gore-Tex bivvies. Um, these are quite heavy, weighing in at around 800 grams. Um, fully waterproof though, fully watertight. That's my newest one, the olive green. And I do prefer that over the uh, DPM pattern there. Um, these aren't really Army surplus, although I do believe they are used in the military. This is a snug pack um, bivvy bag with a sewn in bug net. That was acquired with the... Um, camo netting that is on the ceiling and on the window we also have a snug pack jungle hammock and a military um, bag liner never used that probably will this year though and there you can see the sewn in bug net for the uh, summer bag that is pretty much all we've got on that shelf and now bottom shelf this is where I'll be keeping all the paraffin lamps and the fuel hands um, I have got the fuel hands to add to this collection um, and a couple more of the Coleman lanterns uh, so that shelf will be used predominantly for lighting, paraffin lighting. We have the UCO candelier uh, just at the back there. Not used that for a very long time. And I honestly can't see me using that again. Um, but it's there just for nostalgia. On this shelf is where I keep all my tarps, hammocks, tents, sleeping mats, things like that. So um, we have got a couple of the DD hammock tarps here. We've got the 4x4 and the 5x5. I'm yet to use the uh, 5x5 but I'm thinking of creating a massive plough point with the 5x5 just for laughs. We have the One Tigress compound hammock, um, the comfiest hammock I've used, um, fantastic. Everything you need is in that bag and I've done a couple of modifications to that. I'm still yet to bring that to the channel for review um, but I've just been so busy recently um, just finding the time to do everything. A couple of hammocks wrapped up in the snake skins just here. Um, these I think are the original frontline hammock, uh, just the camping hammock from DD Hammocks. <clears throat> Pretty much all of them have the whoopee sling system just for weight savings. We have my uh, crude gloves or crud gloves. 
This is the 3x3 um, super light hammock, uh, super light tarp from DD Hammocks. Um, this is probably my third one over a span of 15 years. This one is now showing signs of age. This is the Coyote Brown one. It's probably the lightest um, tarp on the market, but using them for so long now, you do start to see, uh, you know, weaknesses of the tarp. And on the last use of this, we did get some rain while I was videoing the uh, coffee machine, the coffee maker in the woods, <coughs> and the stitch holes where the grommets are sto uh, sewn in. It was letting water drip under the tarp, which is a pain in the backside. So I could either look at um, repairing this, maybe with some, is it Shugu, something like that, um, or buy another one. But these are not a cheap tarp. I think they're coming at around 65 quid. Um, but you can't get this. I mean, you could you could relieve the stress holes by not stringing it as taut as you usually would, but I do like my types taut. Um, so we'll see how long that one lasts now in the field. <coughs> uh, another, um, I think this is a TSW camo, grey camo hammock that I got from Wall. Um, I actually used that on my local park a few months ago and it is quite comfortable. This is the original strap system that comes with the compound hammock. Um, but I've since replaced this again with the whoopee sling system from DD Hammocks, much lighter. Um, but the daisy chains on this, um, this is the, the newer version, gives you many, many more um, anchoring points along the strap. Whereas the original, I think it only gives you something like five or something like that. Um, so this is, for somebody who doesn't know how to rig hammocks, this is a no-brainer for them. Um, very easy to use, um, but heavy. We have the DD Superlight Hammock at the back. Um, this goes again with the Superlight range. I've also got the bug net for this as well. Not one of my favourites. I've tried sleeping in this many times, but it just absolutely strangles you when you're laying it. Um, you kind of like this in the night and you get really bad pressure sores on the um, heels as well. I have tried to lie on the diagonal with that, but it's just not doable. And again, um, with the features this one offers you, the compound hammock from One Tigris, um, I would definitely buy that every time over that. Top shelf, done. Good, good, good. Oh, just on the top here, can you see that? Top here, just on the top here, ladies and gents. Um, I've got a couple of stickers and patches and badges. I do want to eventually fill the top of the shelf with channel stickers. So if you have got a sticker for your channel um, and you do want to see, you do want to see it featured along here. We already have Green Valley Outdoors, Floyd, um, and a token from the Bushcraft Show, and then one of my very early patches here, made by Andy. Um, if you want to see your sticker or your channel featured up here, then I'll arrange uh, some sort of an address you can send them to, and I'll stick them up gladly. Next shelf. So, oh, we can do it from here. Um, so, middle shelf. This is, um, again, tents and hammocks. This is my warm bag. Everything that is required for a pretty much all year round camp in the UK. Um, the, the weather is very, very unpredictable. In this pack, this is a reversible pillow um, inside his fleece. So the idea is the fleece side, inside you can keep all your valuables and stuff you don't want breaking. And then when it's time to go to bed, you can take everything out of there, flip it out, use your coat to stuff inside, and you've got a nice fleece lined um, pillow there. In here, we've got socks, an extra top, underwear, things like that, hats, just to keep you warm. Um, and that sits nicely at the top of the bag. Uh, I would recommend anyone camping in the UK, you should have a warm bag anyway, um, goes without saying. We have the One Tigress Promenade Chair. Um, I think <clears throat> on the last family camp I did have the Trichology, the orange and black one, some of you guys may remember. Um, that seen its final days there um, and where the stitching went the frame did poke right through. So that is no longer with us. We have the can't remember what this one is. Cedar Summit um, Etherlite XT mat. This is my go-to mat, preferred mat. I could do with something wider uh, as I like to lie on my front, but it is very comfortable, very warm, very easy to inflate. We have the original Thermarest Pro Lite. Um, I use this with hammocking exclusively. Um, and there's a rubber mat in there as well to stop it slipping about. I couldn't tell you what these are because I haven't had some of them out for quite a while. Um, this one actually is the Batwood Bungalow from One Tigress. Great tent and it's like a Baker style tent. 
Um, I've used that quite a few times now. And I will say, with the shape of that tent, you wouldn't expect it to stand up to um, really serious torrential rain weather. But this one we took to the lakes, first time using it. Um, and I had no, no trees to string this to, but you can freestand it on poles, which I did. And the winds that night were absolutely abhorrent. They, you could hear the direction the winds were going in. Um, and it was blown flat, but never ripped. And it was also, um, as well as blowing a gale, it was absolutely torrential rain as well. Can you even see me there? Yeah. Um, and again, no water ingress. And the tent didn't... Uh, it does have a dodgy zip um, on the sort of shelter you can lift out in front of you. And if the wind gets under it, it will pull that one side up. But that's a, a minor niggle. Fantastic tent. This one is... <coughs> Uh, the Smoky Hut, my first hot tent. Um, again, fantastic tent. It's it's the sill nylon, very very light. Without the pole, it weighs something like 300 grams or something like that. Um, I've used this again with the titanium Winnerwell hot tent stove. It has sustained a tiny tiny few burn holes, which can be repaired, but um, it's it's a great tent. Another Thermarest. Uh, sleepless pad there doesn't have any baffles in it or any heat retaining values it is just a um, a summer pad I used this at the bushcraft show not last year year before and it was quite warm weather and I froze my ass off with this <laughs> well I don't know if you've experienced the same this is a generic double uh, sleeping pad picked this up from a charity shop in the lakes I believe this is a gallop and it's one of them freestanding pumps where you can just pump away and pump that up. This is, <clears throat> I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew this is a 5x5. Five five. Ah, that's where that's gone. So this is a 5x5 five five DD Hammocks um, bag. But inside there we'll find woolly hats, uh, bags for kit. And I'm hoping something... Um, I have misplaced in the move which I'm absolutely devastated about and me and the missus have been um, racking our brains and turned the flat upside down in the last two days it hasn't turned up yet but I really am hoping it turns up because I will be absolutely no words can describe devastated if that thing doesn't turn up again um, but I'm not saying anything yet because I'm hoping it will turn up in the next few days when I start building kits again <coughs> this one is Um, I know we have got a, oh yeah, this is the mesh tent from One Tigress. Never used this, I've had it for about three years now, never used it. It is a summer sort of tent, it's just like the bathtub base, sill nylon, with a nice mesh um, outer tent. Here we have the almighty rock fortress, um, with a few battle scars from the last winter wild camp this went on. Um, again, using it with the hot tent stove. This fabric isn't ideal for hot tenting. Uh, you have to be very, very careful when using it. Um, I did have the One Tigris North Gaze hot tent. Paid full whack for that. And I, was, I wanted to really, really like that. Um, I took it out in the local uh, park just to test it out. And as soon as I put it up, just looking at it, I did not like it. It was brand new and I donated that to um, Living Lavu, who lives in Wales. Um, and he, is, he lives in his Lavu full time he's got a channel now i'll leave the link in the description but he is now the proud owner of that and he absolutely loves it he is using it so i'm glad with that <coughs> that oh and here we have the uh this is a fantastic bit of kit this is the helicontax poncho um, this goes in every kit i build because again you never know with the uk weather and it's easily accessible it can be made into a shelter it can also be thrown over you to protect you and all of your kit as well I think that is a mill shelf done, yeah. Cool. So this shelf, we have the Savotta foam roll mat. This is still going strong after many, many years now. We have the Bushcraft Spain, a 3x3 canvas, oil canvas tarp. And Steve from the last Bushcraft uh, show visit, bought me the um, rather... Strack out small, nothing now when they're cold. Um, but this is the original sort of lines they sell for this tarp so this is a complete unit now uh, and it is a unit i do love this thing very heavy and last time i used it 
a bird shat all over it so I'm hoping um, I think I got rid of most of it but yeah it's a pain in the ass when they do that this is the one tigress bed um, another good friend of mine Brandon <coughs> um, he has informed me that they've actually reimagined this bed now so there's a new model out because these did go out of stock um, but I can't bring myself to buy another one because I'm a single person not a single person I do have a missus but when I go camping I'm a single person so um, these I think I think this was about 120 quid maybe a bit more and I can't justify buying another one for the potential that someone might come camping here we have the original um, Winnerwell fast fold titanium hot tent stove this thing again is still going strong after many many years of use regular and hard use this has got a feature where you can use this as a sort of a, a fire pit as well as a hot tent stove but just under it you can't see it there because the camera's not far enough down Winnerwell Ashley at Winnerwell has been awesome again because he is awesome and he sent me the newly revised version of this for review so we'll have a look at that um, probably I'll start that video tomorrow um, but yeah that's the newly revised version to this so I can compare the new one with the old one and show you what they've done differently and I must say they have made some massive improvements on an already stonking stove in the back there just a generic Euro hike um, mattress that should be over there with the family camping crap um, under there we have the Fennec uh, fire pit which Steve sent over early, early doors um, I've not really used that as much as I should have I should have been taking it to the bushcraft show last year but instead we opted for the Winnerwell smokeless fire pit um, and that performed fantastic so that pretty much covers this um, this shelf on the bottom shelf of this rack we have pretty much everything pertaining to hot tent stoves um, and hot tenting so on this side we have a couple of we have some welders gloves there that I bought early years ago actually from a car boot we have the Winnerwell um, gloves for the hot tent stove. Rob, um, a good friend who got in touch with us while we were experiencing our homeless period, um, came down to the, if you remember me saying, uh, if you followed that journey, that someone came down looking for us on the campsite because they knew where we were and he brought a load of stuff. Well, Rob actually donated this to us, um, a hot tent stove for the tent at the time. Um, this I have actually been in touch with Rob and offered him back since we're no longer in that crisis um, but I would actually be interested in um, doing a review for that as an alternative hot temp stove so uh, I'll reach out to him again if you're not already watching this Rob uh, just let me know if you want to see that on the channel or you want to take that back but this is a uh, Tom Tom mount or a two mount Stainless steel, um, has a, a glass door on the front um, and it looks like a, a very tidy small stove and that would actually be a great comparison to the this is the newly revised Winnerwell uh, titanium fast fold hot tent stove so that could be a great comparison that. We also have things on here such as the uh, protector for the chimney on the flagship um, Winnerwell Nomad external air one of their only stoves that um, gives you that functionality uh, offers that feature and uh, that is a fantastic stove absolutely mind-blowing performance and it burns like a um, natural wood burning fire in your home it does have that sort of flickering flame effect not cheap by any means that was 650 quid i think when we picked that up <coughs> um, this is the pipe to that stove I didn't actually have any of this, um, like the flue, the chimney protector, the silica mat and um, this external feed pipe. It was Winnerwell again, uh, Ashley over at Winnerwell who sent all this out to um, complement the stove when he sent me the tent, um, which we camped in for three weeks, around three weeks. He sent all that to make sure that was safe to use. Absolutely fantastic guy. Just off to the side here we have the off-brand uh, cast iron Dutch oven, fantastic bit of kit and I had fun using that um, on the camping adventure making bread. Um, but yeah pretty much everything in there is to do with hot tent camping as well as the uh, Winnerwell fast fold hot tent stove which is there. All good stuff. 
So the last show for looking at today, ladies and gents, is going to look at cooking kits, uh, cooking equipment, things like that. And then we have a few boxes here um, with surplus to requirements and odds and sods, things like that. Um, so first of all, let's check out the cooking. So the first piece of kit from the cooking shelf is the two compartment or two piece zebra uh, tiffin set. I've never used it and I still don't know why I picked it up at the time, it just seemed like a good idea but this is a kind of a, a bento style box, um, lunch box, again two compartments. I think at the time I was thinking maybe if I was doing a cooking video I could carry pre-cut um, vegetables and stuff in there but again never used it, stainless steel, nice piece but um, never used this. It's very very popular, or a very very popular piece of kit over the pond in the States and this is the Stanley um cook kit what we call it um, now when steve came over to visit um last year for the bushcraft this year for the bushcraft show um, he actually brought this with him and unfortunately all his kit got lost in the air from the airlines so we never got to use this when he was leaving he'd already bought stuff from the bushcraft show so he couldn't fit this in his kit to take home so we left that with me um, and that was the first experience i've had oops of using this kit and i must say um, I am quite fond of it. I do like it. It is a 220 ounce <coughs> or 591 mil up to that dash there. So probably around 630 mil. Um, stainless pot, long handle. And in there you get two drinking cups. Um, again, really, really, as you can see, it was new when he brought it over, but I've had that in the fire. Um, Chris and that. But yeah, really popular over in the States. Um, and I really enjoyed using it. We do have a um, a stainless lid there with a draining sort of hole on there as well which we can't pick up at the minute folding arm to keep everything in place great little pot this is another piece we're going to look at on the table um, and this was given to me by the same gent as the Dutch Army Hoop Bivet and the um, unidentifiable army bag so thank you again Lee this is, I'd call it retro now I remember when these were out many moons ago um, this, since they've banned the Examine blocks, um, you're going to have to find an alternative fuel to use with this, but this is the Esbit coffee maker, <coughs> stainless steel. I've had one coffee out of this so far, but I'm hoping to use this um, with a small alcohol burner, alcohol burner. Um, but yeah, fantastic bit of kit. They don't, I, I don't know if they make these anymore or not, but I remember when they first came out. An old friend uh, bought one, took it out into the woods. And I think we waited for about 40 minutes for the tiniest brew from this thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, we'll have a look at that on the table. Next up, oh, now I picked these up at this year's Bushcraft show. Um, as soon as I got home, I lost them. These are the fire bellows that Martin picked up for me. So I found these, Martin. Thank you very much. These will go in the fire kit. Um, I found them in a coat. The chopping board. Absolutely comes everywhere with me. I made this from beach absolutely yonks ago, probably about 14 years ago now. Still going strong. This was a retro piece I picked up, <clears throat> and I believe these are quite sought after now. This pot for the, oh, what is the Sven stove, is it? The Swedish Sven stove. Um, this pot fits perfectly with that brass stove, and people look for these um, quite regular now, quite often. So that is a two-piece aluminium kit and that came with the Globe Trotter stove from Camping Gas, um, I think. I don't own any of them stoves anymore. I picked them all up for very cheaply off my local flea market, but when I came to use them and try them, they were very, very, extremely, very dangerous. Um, nearly set the house on fire. So I think I've got one left, um, a small one, which should be... Oh, there's the dogs. So yeah, two-piece aluminium kit. Um, Come with a, a retro stove from the 70s, French stove I believe, um, but I'll probably pair that up with a little burner or something. It's nice and compact as you can see. And there's the Camping Gas logo, so we have that on there. This is my Eagle products, um, 1.5 litre I believe this is. Very popular kettle in the bushcraft community. Uh, and we have my coffee in there ready to go. Um, I love this. This goes pretty much with my Frost River sort of kit. The retro vintage style camping kit. Um, that I like to pretend on the frontiers man from like the uh, Hudson River days. 
<laughs> this is a titanium cooking rack. Um, this sometimes gets used in conjunction with the Winnerwell fast fold titanium stove. Again, that stove can be used as a fire pit and I like to use that over it sometimes to cook my meals. We have my Solo Pot 1800, one of my oldest surviving um, sort of cooking pots. And this is a complete cook kit now, so we can set that out. In fact, we'll set that out and we'll have a look at that on the table. Um, a quick look, see, because there's quite a few components to that. And I know a lot of you guys like to look at um, cook kits, so we'll have a look at that. So our first piece on the second shelf of the cooking paraphernalia is the Avenue um, Appalachian Titanium Kit. And this is again a full cook kit weighing less than, um, I think it's around 300 grams. Fantastic cook kit. One of my earlier surviving again, um, around 14 years old that now. And even though as aged the price hasn't, it still goes for a whopping £150 UK. Although it is a cracking little stove just for a solo backpacker this is the full Windsor titanium um, spatula set so we have a pair of grippers and they can be used individually as utensils this is another gift from wall uh, olive wood this is messing um, and it's a steak and knife set beautiful quality um, stainless steel extremely nice and there we have the steak knife as well very very generous gift <clears throat> and I plan to get that used at some point I've even contemplated taking this to steakhouses <laughs> um, just to get me use out of it this is the um, bloody hell, Bushcraft store Bushcraft <clears throat> UK stainless steel cook kit this has the included burner on the bottom stainless steel we have a bail arm there and we have a Tatonka large burner there for use with that pot not the fastest but like I say you're not in a rush um, when you're out and about getting a brew on and this again goes with the Eagle Products kettle and the Frost River pack keeping that sort of retro stainless um, theme going although it is when all this kits in the bag it is a bloody ton to walk around with but it's worth it when you get set up so we also have a titanium coffee press. This is Bestago, 750ml. <clears throat> I have changed the um, lid on this for a nicer, more aesthetically pleasing one. But there, you put your um, coffee in there, press that down, and it does give you a nice little coffee. Titanium, very lightweight. A um, couple of flasks, just for a, a dabble while you're out. This is the Jaeger Steck Panner Folding Hunter's Pan. Um, there is a review for this, I think, on the channel, if I've included that on there, since the last two channels were hacked and deleted. So there's the folding pan. I've also done a video on this and how to season these. This is a fantastic frying pan. Um, really, really nice to use. It has got a hollowed out handle there, so you can add your own handle. But I really enjoy using that. David Fryer's packs. Um, check him out on Instagram, David Fryer's. He makes all sorts of hardware in packs for your cooking and camping kits. And it's all absolutely top notch. Really is high quality stuff. He brought that one to the Bushcraft Show last year for me to buy off him. Fantastic. Um, this one is a titanium, um, little titanium cooking rack that I bought for the Winnerwell. Um, sort of titanium, titanium adventure stove which is now my um, predominantly used portable wood burning stove ESI thermos cut for winter use um, it's a bit crap because it's only plastic it has got the measurement marks on the side but I'm thinking of just using this with one of my titanium cups um, and that should do a better job of keeping that warm we have a nice little form, form insert there stop it slipping um, and a fabric handle can't remember where I got that or why what else have we got lurking oh this is the knockoff Coleman sportsman stove uh, even though it is a knockoff this is an absolutely awesome stove to use I really do enjoy using this um, there is a video in the gear review playlist if you want to go and check that out we'll just have a quick gander just to show you what we're talking about so it's one of these yeah 
um, runs off paraffin or the Coleman clean fuel um, and again I can't remember was it a BSA or something like that um, I cannot remember the name again more details and an in-depth review on this on the channel if you want to check that out just go into the gear review playlists there's also one for solo camping cooking feel free to go and check them out also feel free to subscribe if you haven't already done so thank you very much that will help me immensely at the back we have the Winnewell stainless steel uh, hot tent stove kettle this is a coffee percolator as well absolutely beautiful piece of kit absolutely beautifully engineered as you can see there we have the twisted wire furnishings on there and um, bail arm with the same sort of furnishing um, and it's this was our go-to kettle during our time of crisis and absolutely love it to bits <coughs> that will be um, a standard staple uh, on any of our wow camping uh, family um, family trips and all that really really nice so third shelf down and first of all we have a titanium kettle which was very kindly bought for me one christmas by my oh good catch me loving sister uh, i won't take that out there because it's a pain in the ass to put back in but there we go it's just one of these standard titanium um, kettles i have since replaced the lid um, I've swapped it off one of my cup kits for another, far better suited. In fact, that is in my go-to cup kit, so we'll have a look at that obviously on the table. This is the remnants of one of the retro style uh, camping gas cookers that we got off the flea market. Um, there we go. This is a fantastic burner, um, and I've mixed this up with a Chinese, one of the Chinese... Um, flame regulators here it does get very hot very quickly so i need to be very careful when using that um, but it's only small and again it has that built-in windshield around it as well so it's a really really nice little cooker and that just sits inside this kettle for absolutely no reason at all the kettle's awesome and um, that goes with probably the winter lightweight sort of kit if i do require the need of a kettle and there's that i think that was about 40 to 50 pounds um, she won't tell me how much it was but I know how much they are going for this is the Tatonka kettle this is a 1.6 litre um, um, story with this obviously I've mentioned this on other videos from past channels it took me a while to find this I remember seeing it on Survival Lily's channel she was cooking on a beach and I'd just seen this pot since then I've obviously seen uh, Ray Mays using it, this is one of his go-to pots, they do do this in bigger sizes, this is 1.6 and as soon as I seen this it had to be mine so I did some uh, research and I eventually found it was Tatonka <clears throat> so I picked this up from a store, uh, from a store in um, the lakes, I can't remember the, the name, it begins with T, the store, I can't remember but this is a frying pan um, with a small handle there, connects onto that so you have a small frying pan and then we have the pot, the billy pot. Now a couple of issues when using this, um, I realised it wasn't actually to my needs. It was a bit, it was missing a few features that I could have done with. First of all, there's no handle on the actual base pot. It would have been nice if they included just a small um, adaption just for that handle as well. And the bail arm is quite thick. So when it comes to suspending that off something like a tree branch um, pot hanger, it doesn't sit flush like a wire bail arm. So it, it does kind of sit lopsided like that. It does lock when you lift it, but when you're tip, tipping it, it does slip out um, like so. So it's a nice design. It was very popular at one point, but this is surplus to requirement now, and I don't really use it as much. Um, it did used to find its way into my more primitive kit, like the <coughs> Frost River kit with the Eagle Products kettle and stuff, but uh, I've just not become... I fell out of love with it to be honest. And I'd rather use the Solo Pot 1800 now. So there's that. On to portable cook stoves. Now, for many years, the um, Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box XL was my absolute go to stove um, for burning wood in the outdoors. I started with the Stainless Steel XL, since worked up to the um, titanium. Now I had the stainless steel for many many years and I never had an issue with that. Using the titanium one, um, it did start warping significantly. 
and this the problem the main problem I've got with this stove is um, it's advertised as titanium in a very small print it does mention it does have stainless steel components which is a big no-no if you're selling a titanium a bit of kit I want it full titanium I don't want it mixed and matched um, with different materials so um, and it's not as light as you would think with them stainless steel parts being in there um, so that again doesn't really get used anymore I did adorn it with a lovely um, leather sheath there as you can see but my new go-to stove is one again from Winnerwell the fantastic folk over at Winnerwell and this is probably I'll be honest a little bit light a little bit heavier sorry than the Winnerwell than the Bushcraft Essentials but highly functional and offers more functionality than the Bushbox XL so this can be used as a standalone stove as you see there so with just that stove you're looking at about 300 grams and that's full titanium construction um, works flawlessly absolutely fantastic bit of kit you can also add on to uh, which they very kindly sent over to me to review the um, the table stand actually raises this stove off the ground you can go and check the review for this I did compare it against the um, Bush Box XL but this is now my go-to stove for burning uh, bio materials out in the woodland and as you can see it falls down very very flat have the fold out legs there so the table can actually be used separately to the stove if need be but absolutely fantastic stove we'll get that in a bit next up we have the very famous some of you may know about this anyway this is the kelly kettle oh yeah them knees and 44 year old knees so the kelly kettle scout and um, this was sent over very very generously by Steve, um my good friend my awesome brother from another um, basically um, Kelly kettle scout version stainless steel they do the gilly kettle in aluminium this is far more favorable for me uh, absolutely faultless performer oh look at me thinking thinking ahead I've got tinders in there as well well this is basically a storm kettle like I say you might be uh, familiar with these yourself but these are absolutely fantastic I've got all paraphernalia for cooking on top at the bottom um, so this is a complete kit now it is bulky to stove and carrying about and it is quite heavy but just with the action of feeding that stove through the top here it's well worth it in my my opinion fantastic bit of kit um, and that will be coming out on some winter camps with me very soon and the last piece on the shelf um, is again one of my most favorite pieces i do like this and this again was sent very kindly by wall and this is the um, Dave Canterbury stainless steel coffee percolator um, great bit of kit I took this on the Bushcraft show year before last um, I think this is I'd be lying if I told you I knew off the bat um, this is a 48 ounce or 1300 mil coffee percolator like we've seen with the titanium one um, but again this can be used just as a, a cooking vessel and a good size cooking vessel like that we do have a flip up um, tab there which is self locking and then the plunger and we have very similar to the um, let me try and find it quickly I think I left it out here I did Stanley um, sort of lid see there we have the tip out pouring spouts very very similar in design but yeah I do I really do like using this you can make a good litre of coffee and just keep that uh, broiling over the fire and it's really nice construction as well really nice build quality and uh, thank you all for sending that absolutely awesome the path find path the pathfinder uh, coffee percolator stainless steel lastly on the bottom shelf we have another review product from winter wealth this is their smokeless fire pit um, this folds down uh, to probably that dimension um, I do have the extendable legs for that as well the cooking grate on the top is extendable height adjustable uh, fantastic bit of kit that all stainless steel um, I'm gutted because I did get a bit of oil on that while I was cooking it has seemed to have stained it so I'm looking for a product to try and get that up nice and shiny again but there is a review, a review for that on the channel and I took that to last year's Buscraft show there's some tremendous steaks on there really really nice and really really easy to use as well that's another review item 
Um, I'm still debating on how to approach that. That is a eye to heal um, reverse osmosis water purifier. I have been in contact with the company that sent that um, regarding a few concerns I had uh, regarding the build quality. So hopefully that is going to be a function over fashion um, product when I come to review that. That should be coming in the next few weeks. And that is that for that shelf of the cooking stuff. Nothing of real significance worth pointing out um, in the boxes. On the top shelf we do have my grail, the holy grail. Fantastic bit of kit that, and it's the only one I know of that uh, filters out viruses. Um, the Geo Press, absolutely fantastic. And just a, a large um, water bottle from Nalgene, BPA free. In the boxes, again, nothing of major significance. I have tried my best to compartmentalise um, bits pertaining to little bits of kit. So this is pretty much a um, extension of the cup kits. Um, we've got in there a big non-stick fry pan, a couple of coffees, the um, spice pack, enamel cup, um, a large uh, windshield, and a watermill bag in that one. In here we have um, little bits of sort of my coffee pouch that I keep my coffees in. <clears throat> we have the uh, Maxpedition Fatty which goes with me pretty much everywhere. This is my survival and ditty bag sort of every, all sorts of little bits in there. Sewing needles, things like that. Um, we also have a few compasses, um, a pair of battery powered socks that my brother sent. I might have to throw them in the warm bag and give them a go. These shelves, ladies and gents. <laughs> oh my god. So I were having a look on, online for some sort of a shelving like this. And these were the cheapest I found. I couldn't believe it when I when I seen £20 a shelf. And they're like one, two, three, four, five shelf um, shelving units. When the boxes turned up, tipped them out. And I instantly just burst out laughing because I couldn't find any fixings for them. Nor could I find any instructions, and it sounded like tinfoil when they were falling out of the box. Um, I built one, took me about an hour to build the first one because I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, basically, it's just fold up tabs, so you slot it all together and then fold it up, uh, fold the tabs up. But now they are pretty sturdy, so I'm pretty happy with them. Um, the shelving is nothing more than compressed cardboard, so I can't have anything that might retain moisture or anything on there like that because that'll knacker them. But yeah, for the uh, 80 quid for four shelves, it's filled this wall. Um, in this one, we have sharpening, anything to do with sharpening, uh, a few odd knives in there, tinders, uh, we have the awl, um, the homemade awl, a couple of bits of beeswax. Bottom, uh, can you see that? Yeah, so in here we have like a number of shoulder bags. So we have the Elegant Tex Bushcraft Satchel. I'd still use that quite regular. We have a couple of bags uh, for the tripod, things like that. This is a uh, surplus. This is Helicon Tech surplus um, sort of wash bag. I turned it into a medical kit. I did do a review of this on the channel. The video is still floating about, but it was only a tabletop. And a, um, if you want to see that, I can put that on the channel so you can have a look. <coughs> um, but this, I'll just give you a quick. It's actually perfectly fitted for a um, medical sort of first aid kit. You've got the mirror at the top there. Everything's easily identifiable uh, through the Nesh Metting. Nesh Metting? Mesh Netting. <laughs> um, and as you can see there, it's fully stocked out there with a medical kit. I could actually do a giveaway for this on the channel because it is new. This was sent by Wall. Uh, I might even slap one of my patches on there. So if you're interested, let me know and I might do a giveaway for that fully loaded. Um, a nice little medical kit there. Here we have my wood carving and gouges, sort of tool roll kit. Uh, this is a set of vintage 1950s gouges um, and a couple of, um, we have a cr uh, spoon knife in there as well. <coughs> Apologies guys, can't bleed and breathe. Uh, we also have a draw knife there made from James, that turbo conquering mega eagle. Um, and again a couple of a couple different size augers. Um, that we can use with the homemade auger arm there. So I do like that kit, it's nice, comes out in the summer sometimes. Um, 
What do we have in this? We have in this the original belt for the Frost River Isle Rail Senior Pack. That has since been upgraded to the more padded, more substantial belt for weight load carry. Um, we have a couple more bags in here. That is the Helicon Tech Satchel and the old bread bag, Polish bread bag. Never been used. Um, these gained popularity a few years ago in the bushcraft community again. Um, I added a few. I added like the officer's notepad, Velcro thing at the back and a, a little leather. But uh, not something I'll probably use again. To be honest, strap. <coughs> and we also have, that should be in the top pack actually. This is my um, forager bag from, I can't remember the bleeding company's name again. Same as that stainless steel cut kit. Bushcraft, the Bushcraft shop. The Bushcraft store, I think, yeah, so that's that. Um, that will go in there. I use that quite regular when I'm out, either foraging um, for birch bark or flammable tinders, berries, nuts, things like that. So, there we have that one. Um, in this one we have CO2 capsules for a CO2 rifle at the old house. Um, that is knackered, it won't be used. Tin of fab seal. We have slingshot ammo there. We did buy a slingshot from... Um, the year before last bushcraft show um, from uh, a slingshot stall obviously I brought that home had some fun with that just got my eye in took the missus out with it I said have a go at that and she pulled the bleeding elastics the wrong way snapped them off I've still got it knocking about somewhere but I can't seem to fix it everything I do with it it either fires off that way or that way or it's, uh, it's just not true anymore so I think Next year's um, um, Bushcraft show, I will be buying another one. Um, in there again, we've got some jute twine, duct tape, candles, all odds and sods. Nothing I'm going to need straight away. That pretty much, on up there, we've got um, sharpening stones and the Kershaw sharpening system um, that I use sometimes just to hone the edge of the knives. That pretty much covers this side of the wall. Ladies and gents, um, I don't think I've missed anything. No, nope. just here we have the Bluetti um, four panel, solar panel, and with that we have the oil powers as well, just off to the side. Um, we've got one side to look at now, which is the bag wall. I've just stood in a ball bearing. Oh, bloody hell. So, I'll swing you around, we'll have a look at the bags. So the camera's temperature is showing up now, so the camera's getting a bit warm. I'll give it a rest in a minute. But first bag on the wall here, we have the Frost River Isle Royale. Um, absolutely stonking pack. Not for everyone, and it is definitely more um, fashion over function, I'll be the first to admit. Um, absolutely beautiful looks. Again, it's all canvas, brass rivets, leather. Um, it is adorned with absolute, just pure, sheer beauty. And it does really take you back to sort of the Hudson Bay frontiersmen um, of yore. And this is the kit I use with all my uh, heavier stainless steel sort of primitive looking kit. Um, and it, beautiful pack. I have used it um, a couple of times now. I'm having to use a piece of rolled up foam mat inside just to give the pack some body. In there there's a couple of um, um, sleeping bags just to fill it out a little bit there. But we do have a draw cord system on the side of it. Um, turn it round. This is a very, very popular bag, um, a very expensive bag in the bushcraft community. You can see there we have elk leather on the straps, um, beautifully padded. The belt this usually comes with is very, very flimsy. It's just a fabric belt and it does nothing to help you with the load bearing capabilities um, that this bag should be able to offer you, um, being such a heavy um, sort of canvas pack. I have since upgraded that to a padded belt, much more substantial and it does really help to um, sort of move that weight around your waist um, taking it off your shoulders so if you do own one of these it is well worth picking one of these up I think they're around 50 quid 45 quid but it really does help um, the bag to do its job quite a basic pack we have two um, bottle pouches on the front which are big enough to take one of the large Nal jeans um, which I've just shown you a minute ago, and the Grail. So we have two of them front pockets there, again on the um, brass and leather buckles. In the middle we have a Hax holster, a Hax, an Hax holster. Uh, so I use my grandfather's brooks in there. 
really sets the pack off. Um, this is definitely an Instagram pack if you are an Instagrammer. <coughs> you want to show a pack off, this is the one um, to do it with. Um, inside, very, very simple pack really. It is basically just a dump pouch, massive dump pouch. We have a couple of retaining straps at the top here just to help close that in. And uh, we have some flaps, canvas flaps, which can tie up and pull over. Not the most water resistant pack as you can imagine. It does have a uh, DWR finish on it. Well, it is treated with... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. It is treated with, um, obviously, oil. it's an oil canvas, so it, naturally it's waterproof anyway. Um, just a large flap sits over. We do have a pocket there, a mat pocket. I do wish this was the other way, so the insert was there because um, when you lift the when you lift this lid up, if you've got something in that pocket, it dumps out straight onto the floor. So there we have that. And again, we've just got a couple of sleeping bags in there um, just to fill it out. We have a couple of shallow pockets on the side as well, which you can use for uh, saws, things like that, using the cinch up system on the side. Second of all. Probably my favourite winter bag, this is the Savota Jakari XL. Um, the Savota Jakari L, actually. But this has got everything you could possibly buy added onto this pack. Um, so we have a nice side pouch here on the belt. This used for binoculars or uh, trail mix, things you want to get to quickly. We also have the two rocket pouches on the side. Um, this is, I believe, a 85 litre maximum stuff capacity pack um, and 65 litre in its smallest size. I might have screwed that totally up, I do apologise. I, I will put it on the screen if I do remember. Um, but we have molly webbing absolutely all over the pack. Um, we have some really generous size um, loops on the bottom for carrying the Savata roll mat. Um, it's, it's just a fantastic pack. Really nice quality material, buckles everywhere. This one's a roll top enclosure. Um, we have a nice finish in there as well, just to ma maintain the waterproofness of the bag, ensuring all your kit inside remains dry. I've never really used this with um, an inner waterproof pack, just as it is. It does have the cover that fits over the full pack, and I use that with um, all of my bags, because it's one to fit all. Um, <clears throat> I did, I did, I, I did, I, I did, I full, uh, <laughs> I did a full in-depth review on this pack on the old channel. Uh, really went to town on it because it was, it's an absolutely fantastic modular pack. The belt can be taken off and worn as sort of a Batman sports utility belt. Um, so you can run around the forest pretending you're Batman or Rambo or whatever. Uh, so that can be removed, but it is a really, really well thought out pack this. We have some really nice adjustable strapping all the way down. We have some S-shaped, very comfortable and ergonomic straps on the shoulders. Very well padded as well there. Um, these, when it was new, did prove to be quite difficult to cinch up. The material wasn't very forgiving in these buckles. It's uh, alleviated somewhat since. It is a framed pack as well, an internal frame pack. And we do have some nice foam ribs running down the pack here. Very, very comfortable to carry. Extremely comfortable to carry this pack is um, said Yoda but yeah um, again extremely comfortable I can't tell you how comfortable this pack is this is probably between the Savota uh, saddle sack and the Savota Jakari it would be very very close as to say which one was the comfiest to carry I'm probably going to say this this is very very comfortable um, <clears throat> as it stands the pack Retail wise probably comes in at, oh sorry, the lid can be removed as well. So you can just have the roll top enclosure. So a full modular pack. I think the pack when I bought it came in at around 350 alone. And then with everything I've added to it, it came in at around 650 quid. Price has dropped since then, so you can pick these up for, um, I'd say 400 quid now with everything you need on it. And it is well worth it. It's a fantastic pack. Really, really nice. And Savota, um, a finished brand. The, the quality is just there, absolutely amazing. And now ladies and gents, for something a little bit different. This is now currently my favourite everyday carry Bushcraft Rook, and this is the Savota Saddle Sack. So, this is a, a full canvas external frame pack. These are becoming very, very thin on the ground now. Uh, I managed to pick this one up in as new condition off uh, Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. 
uh, from a young lad who found the pack was too big for him. He was only short statured guy. Um, <clears throat> so I snatched this up off him at a good price as well, I might add. Um, but again, this is a, an external frame pack. We'll go over the front features first. Um, so this uses the same sort of fabric as the uh, Savata Jakari there. Jakari. Um, again, the same sort of buckle uh, cinch up system. This is pretty much a, a take on a 1950s uh, mountain rook. That's why we have all the buckles um, with straps. There is no quick release um, getting into any of the compartments on this pack, which I like. I really do like it's taken back to its basic functions. Uh, so we have some really generous bottle pockets on the side. Again, just pull that to release the uh, flap, which does fit over the bottle pocket. Um, very generous again. These will fit the Nalgene um, 2 litre um, bottles in these. Again, we have the same strap system to get inside of the main compartment. If it does it properly. Doesn't take long at all. You can usually just pull on that. Yeah, I was pulling the wrong leading one, that's why. So we have a draw cord cinch up system to get into the main dump pot, dump pouch. These are quite hard to press. Um, that is a niggle of current users of this pack. But everything just basically dumps in there. There's no internal pockets, there's nothing. Um, just one pouch like the Frost River Isle Royale. We have a zip on the front which gives you access from the outside to the internal. Um, I might just leave <coughs> like my gloves on the inside of that, just for easy access. Um, could have done without that to be honest. I don't think it adds any real benefit to the pack in a whole. Um, on the front we do have another larger size pouch just at the front. This is where I keep all my fire starting tinders. Um, tinder kit. Um, the Grandpa's Brooks Axe Puck and a few other bits or the uh, fire triangle uh, for suspending pots over a fire <clears throat> so really nice fabrics again it's an old uh, sort of oil treated canvas or wax canvas on the side we have a, a cinch up lace system again the capacity of this bag is around 65 litres um, when everything's opened up if we go into the back the best feature of this pack is the external frame there. Um, the, the thing about this pack is it doesn't have a waist belt, it wasn't designed with one and since I've been using it, which is on many occasions for a while now, um, I haven't missed it. It doesn't swing around on your body, you've got these two sort of um, external pre Give me a second. when something sticks out. We have these two things here that kind of wrap around your waist. Uh, we have the adjustable back strap here, which allows the um, the back of the pack to sit nicely around your pack rather than bouncing about. We have the same up here, all this is adjustable for you. Um, we do have a sternum strap. <coughs> the fingers with this pack though, nothing is adjustable on the fly, so you do need to get it just right, um, which is one of the drawbacks of this pack. So if you set this pack uh, wearing just a shirt and you go to put a thick coat on you're gonna have to readjust all your straps on that but you know um, I think it's well worth doing just for just for owning this pack it's it's a stunning pack beautiful pack um, and I maybe should have looked for two because if this ever does get damaged or um, comes to a state where it's unusable I won't have another one and I'll be devastated because this is now again my uh, protrudes these these two protrusions here wrap around your back uh, and it adds stability when you maybe walking fast or running um, it's it's very nice very nice comfortable straps uh, shoulder straps here very nicely padded um, and it's just an absolutely awesome pack again I have done a review on the channel for this pack you can check that out um, you get a front profile there see it's quite a slender pack fits, ni <coughs> fits nicely on your back nothing really bulks out uh, like the Savata or the uh, carry more when them side pockets are filled you t I mean it's coming out on your back like this and when you're walking through styles uh, places like that it's a pain in the ass because sometimes you've got to take the pack off throw it over get yourself through and then put it all back on with this nice and slender and it doesn't give you any problems really so the Savota Jakari no it's not it's not it's the Savota Saddle Sack 393 or the 939 
can't remember which one. But yeah, so glad I bought that when I did. Um, I was toying with the idea, because they do do these in um, two variations. You get one with a leather patch with the 1950 style Savato logo. And then you get the updated version, which is the same as the Jakari. So I, I got this one. Um, brilliant pack. If you can find one, buy one. That's all I'll say. Really, really nice. Right. We've got the floor. And then we'll bring some kit to the table and have a quick look. So first off, ladies and gents, we have a high gear four shelf cupboard. That's crap. I can go over there. And here we have our saviour. When we became homeless, this became our home. The five metre green canvas bell tent from the canvas tent shop and what a stonking tent this is um, they have released a new version of this now with higher side walls but we had no problem using this you had a king size airbed in there and a lot of gear as well absolutely phenomenal tent um, and it take, took me I, again I've reviewed this you can check the review out video for this um, it has some really really nice functions with it uh, some nice features and this took me around 15 minutes to put up it's not your standard canvas bell tent um, this does have a built in uh, rubberized floor and it is so easy to put up again t uh, 15 minutes and you can get this baby up um, we had this in some really bad winds and some really bad rain not once did we get any water ingress in the tent we had a few damp panels but that's just part of the weathering um, I did treat a couple of the panels just to be safe where the bed was pressing against the canvas <coughs> with fab seal but this is our saviour and we will be forever grateful to Winnerwell for sending this not win a well canvas tent shot <coughs> for sending this for review when they did because if we didn't have this we'd have been up uh, crap street without a paddle no creek crap creek without a paddle so this is the uh, canvas tent shop five meter bell tent this is the cocoon go and check the review out on the channel uh, fantastic tent oh my knees and if you missed it for whatever reason ladies and gents as you can see we do have the camo netting up on the ceiling for aesthetic effect um, I think it gives it a really unique look and I, I do like it we have a, a long piece here and we have a piece running down the back of the window as well um, and I picked this up with some other wild camping gear from a gent earlier this year um, so yeah I think it looks all right up there I don't think I'll be using it out um, in the wilds doing a camp but if I choose to it's easily taken down um, but for just for looks, I can pretend I'm in a scene from Predator or Rumble. Um, and it just gives it a nice look. What do you guys think? Let me know. Right, let's have a look at some choice gear on the table. Right, ladies and gents, so on the table in front of you, you'll find some bits of kit I picked up very, very recently. And we're going to go through the cup kit as well, because I know a lot of you guys like a look through um, a good bushcraft cup kit. So let's start with the mystery bag to start with shift all this to the side so this is a bag I picked up at um, the end of last week from Lee and it is still a bit damp because I washed it last night but it's a full length bag as you can see um, we have the mummy style foot box the zip does run straight down the centre like the British Army Arctic bags but at the top for the eagle eyed eagle eyed eagle eyed and the smart Alex, you might be able to identify this bag. We have two armholes, um, which zip down here and here, meaning you can sit in the bag with your arms free to enjoy your cuppa in the morning. The bag is also fleece lined or fur lined. We have a fully zipped up head here, so you can leave that fully enclosed and just have the face open, <coughs> or you can zip the whole thing back and have it all open now the only way of identifying this i found is the tag inside it's a, a polyester uh, pile 100 percent again this is like a pile line sleeping bag not something i've come across before um, survival aids limited pertex nylon outer shell um, and it says an all-weather outer bag that's all i've got made in the uk so i'm not sure whether this could be some kind of um, ex British military bag but not something I've come across before we do have Moreland, Penrith, Cumbria um, and a couple of washing instructions there there's no name in it so I don't know if this has been used or not um, the zips are Opti, Opti zips 
they are quite free running zips they don't seem to snag but it's just interesting that that is a pile lined uh, sleeping bag and there is no filling in that <coughs> apart from that pile lining so it'll be interesting to know if any of you guys know um, where this bag comes from where it originates and what sort of um, division it's used in if any um, but with these arm slits I bet it'd be nice and comfortable to sit in the morning um, enjoying your brew at camp as well so I'll be giving that a go with the uh, this and obviously the other few military surplus items I do have so that is the first one ladies and gents very kindly donated to the channel by Lee so thank you Lee for that I hope you can help put that down to the side second of all this is the Dutch army hooped bivy um, absolutely fantastic bit of kit I cannot wait to get out and use this in fact I might even use uh, one section of the mesh netting with this <coughs> so in there you do get your hoop um, and this threads around like so so we have the hoop like that and you can see just how wide that is you probably can't but that is very very wide loads of room in there even for a larger sized person um, and that <coughs> simply feeds we've got this the right way yeah so that feeds through this rib here so it'll feed through there this will be supported I'll probably lay this out on the floor um, just after we've done this so you can get a better idea um, but this requires pegs as well to peg out as you can see the pegging loops here but it's a really really large substantial bag that and it's full Gore-Tex so that is going to keep you out of the elements but on the base of it as well this is designed to carry a your sleeping mat on the external so obviously it doesn't take up any room inside the sleeping compartment so we have two straps here um, for your pad to slip in and we have one just in the middle there so your paddle fit through there and I'll probably use that with the Savata roll mat um, just to protect that pad off the floor but yeah really 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 nice bit of kit that and then we have the loops there um, to accept the pole when you put the pole through I'll set this up very quickly just to give you an idea of it um, at the end of this video so here we have the Esbit burner coffee maker so inside here are all the gubbins that's your little uh, fuel tray obviously you can't use that with um, hexamine tablets anymore they've been banned um, for explosive reasons I believe there you get your little tray your little tin tray and I think you get a little stand in the actual pot as well yeah stands a bit rusted probably won't be using that again I'll use that with a dedicated burner but um, the way this works you basically just put your coffee in your water in put that on a slow boil and then your coffee ejects from there I will be using this I will be taking this on the uh, army surplus camp it isn't surplus but it's bloody awesome regardless so we'll be using that the knives so you will have seen the Jatlow uh, standard bushcraft knife there we picked that up from the bushcraft show from a very very good friend uh, Martin so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to buy that that will never leave my side now um, stunning knife and more recently I have picked up my first adventure sworn um, explorer from over in New York I believe these are made full custom we do have the adventure sworn marking the lighting is terrible I do apologize probably not going to see that but we have a um, paper micarta scales red liners um, it's a three mil um, stock blade full flat grind so it should be fantastic at slicing and uh, making feathers with that I've used it just very very lightly um, on one occasion when I was doing another video um, so my plan is to get out with this one <coughs> and the jack though and put them head to head what do you reckon about that do you reckon that will make a good video um, so we've got a dedicated bushcraft blade there and an explorer blade totally different uh, grinds there we've got a 4 mil stock on this side versus the 3 mil but I think it'll make a good video that put them head to head and there we have that so this was purchased from a website online called Sporting Cutlery and before I actually jumped on this there was an Allen Wood original bushcraft knife which I pondered for way too long uh, I lost the opportunity to buy that but I have got that one 
So this has had a few more, um, this has been featured many times on the channel now over the years and I've always made small alterations to the cut kit. As you know, you'll never get it perfect and there's always something you're going to change in a cut kit. So first of all we have the, it's always lived in this pack, this is a, a wax canvas Kernel Bushcraft from Cornwall I think it was, I've had them for years now. We have the same one on the Eagle product kettle. So let's start with the exterior of this cut kit, so we have a titanium pot and lid there and um, this just adds another vessel for boiling water or cooking in just, just gives you a multi pot use with barely any weight so a good size pot there the angle for that does live inside the cook kit the cook kit is housed around the solo pot 1800 all stainless steel the lid has a nice um, nice lid there it does lock in place no other use for the lid which is unfortunate um, than a lid, but that does also fit on, no it doesn't, I am lying to your face, so there's that, this is the main brew kit, um, inside there we have the wire snap handle for the titanium pot, there we go, <coughs> and there is your 1.8 litre uh, billy pot, with one wobbly leading handle, that's always been like that and this is the brew kit, so the brew kit is an out kit um, Mai Tai mug, 750ml that is one of my original pieces of bushcraft kit let's zoom that in a bit now so one of my original pieces of bushcraft kit, this came as a kit with actually that the uh, titanium pot on the bottom and a smaller cup as I, as I mentioned before, we stole the lid off one of the pots and this is actually the lid of the titanium kettle but it has a deeper wall there as you can see and it fits more securely to this pot. Inside there we have the Windmaster Asoto gas burner which is an absolutely phenomenal stove. If you own these you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, these will bring your water to a boil in under two minutes. Very very fast stove and we also carry a small gas in there. The stove and the actual uh, pot rest comes separate on this, it's just a matter of flicking that out and introducing that to the stove top, burner top, just like that. Again really really nice stove, this does have a piezo igniter on it, when I bought this the guy told me everything was working as it should um, the PZO does not work, but I'm not forced. That will take a spark off the fire steel um, and that will work. So that is the cut kit as it stands. Um, it is minus the cutlery at the minute, but um, Ashley did send with the new hot tent stove there a beautiful little set of folding titanium uh, cookware which will fit perfectly inside this pot. So here it gives you um, a bit of a better look of how it's designed to be used. So we have pegging out points on the bottom, on the side, at the top and that will really help to stretch this out, make it more taut and this should give you loads of room inside, plenty of room at the bottom as well for your bag um, so you shouldn't even need a, a tarp with this to be honest now I was worried um, the only way into this was going to be through the top of the hood here, where you're going to have to crawl around on the floor this is actually a side entry zip, that zips all the way down the side of the bag here and we also have an included bug net um, so this I think is going to be an absolutely fantastic uh, stealth shelter. Should give you plenty of room inside as well. So not too claustrophobic. We're hoping. Awesome. And that ladies and gents concludes our first look at my newly fully organised gear room. Um, how long it will stay like that I do not know because I am a sod for moving stuff and losing stuff but you can be sure uh, I'll bring you back as and when we make any significant changes or add any more gear there is a few bits um, to add to the kit um, dotted about here and there but the majority of it is in um, so with that I will say if you enjoyed the video please give the video a like and if you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing to the channel it costs you nothing but it, um, it helps me immensely and if you want updating for further videos, just make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified for 
future content. If you didn't like the video, then press that thumbs down button twice. Please, thank you. Awesome, right. Tidy this stuff up and I will see you for the next one. Until the next one, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye. <clears throat>